Welcome to EcoCode. I'm your professor, Dr. Katherine Holshoff. I want to take a few minutes to introduce myself and talk about why I'm teaching this course. I'm originally from South Texas, from San Antonio. I didn't go to the best of schools or grow up in the best of neighborhoods, but we all knew that to get to improve our situation, we had to be good at something. So good at sports or good at school. I realized that I was better at school than I was at sports. And so I focused on school. It paid off because I was accepted to the College of Arts and Sciences at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. And my first few semesters, few years, I felt entirely underprepared. Um, I, you know, I had never left home before. I was definitely out of my comfort zone. But as part of the federal work study program, I worked with the couple that you're looking at here. This is Drs. Dan Jansen and Willie Halwax. They're famous biologists that work in Costa Rica. And they had a major influence on my career because they invited me to Costa Rica each summer where I studied and collected plants and butterflies. This was an amazing experience. Um, it helped form my fascination with tropical ecosystems. But what I really wasn't exposed to at this point was how do we understand and quantify these complex ecological systems? It wasn't until graduate school at the University of Arizona where I was exposed to the tools and technologies that are needed to quantify complex systems. This is where I realized I had a fascination for quantitative ecology and quantitative theories, like something called the metabolic scaling theory. So what's graphed here is, um, you know, if we take metabolic rate and we take body mass, we see this general pattern across taxa. And the fact that you can say something fundamental about how life is organized across the tree of life based on a few simple parameters was fascinating to me. This fueled my interest in programming and data and because at that time there really weren't any openly available tools for analyzing large and complex data sets. You had to have expensive software. As a graduate student, I couldn't afford. And that software was really hard to use. It wasn't well documented. You, need, you needed advanced training to even use the software. After I graduated, I spent a year as a postdoc or postdoctoral uh, fellow at the University of California, Davis where I was introduced to programming groups like this R users group. These are self-organized groups that um, are located around the world. They have these you know, occasional meetups uh, where the groups talk about programming and code and data. And what I love about these groups is that it really helps build a sense of community and in general, they're uh, very welcoming and inclusive and it makes you feel like you're, you're, you're part of something. I was also introduced to groups like Our Ladies Global. And after uh, California, I accepted my first faculty position at the University of Puerto Rico. At the time, it was great. I'm a tropical ecologist, so living and working in the tropics was a unique opportunity. I also had a chance to work with some incredible students and collaborators. So these are as my field technician, a few graduate students, and there, there I am at the corner. We at that day we were sampling plants and butterflies in a uh, a tropical dry forest. Um, so I, yeah, I, you know, I, it was great to work with these students and incredible collaborators until Hurricane Maria. Hurricane Maria was a disastrous situation. I lost a ton of research projects, but we were relatively lucky. You know, our house was intact and we were unharmed. Uh, afterwards, I accepted a position at VCU 
where I bring my love of data science to the Department of Biology. What I love about data science is that it's such an exciting field. Data science is the fastest growing industry in the world. It allows us to be on the cutting edge and there's no indication that this demand has slowed or that it will slow. Quite the opposite, it's predicted to continue growing. I truly believe that the ability of ecology to solve major challenges depends on data science. What I also love about data science, in addition to having a solid understanding of basic scientific theories, is that these are the types of skills that will set you apart when you're on the job market. Oh, I'm really happy to be a part of VCU and finally call Richmond home and um, you know set some roots down. I had my first baby last year. So this photo was taken uh, almost a year ago now. Uh, look how cute he is. Oh, look at those cheeks. So he is twice as big now and twice as demanding. So if you hear a baby crying in the background in these videos, now you know who it is. And he's got this little coating shirt. How cute. Okay, I can stare at this photo all day long. Let's get back to the science. So what is data science? Data science is a combination of computer science, statistics, and business knowledge. You know, as scientists, we are not trained to have a business mindset, but we should be. And the more time you spend with open science and open tools that you'll learn about in this course, you'll start to see the overlap and the importance of having an entrepreneurial mindset. What I love about data science and the open science movement is that in many ways, it is making science more accessible. The tools that we'll learn about are open access. The data that we'll use is publicly available online. So no matter where you are in the world or whether or not you're financially or physically capable of collecting data in the field yourself, you can participate in science. The data, the tools, the tutorials are all out there. All you need is a computer and a good internet connection. So data science is becoming known for its beautiful data visualizations. And by the end of this course, you'll be able to produce some stunning graphics like the kind you see here. These are the kind of graphics you might expect to see in a scientific journal or even the New York Times. So these graphics are built using some of the language that will, the coding language that we'll learn in the course. By the end of the course, you'll have some marketable skills that you can add to your resume and the percentage of matching job postings that include uh, R, which is the language that we'll learn in this course, and data science has risen exponentially. That's the orange line here. The types of jobs that require these data science skills range from every sector you can think of, um, from government to industry, nonprofit, related to business, science, art. In um, universities, for example, the University of Michigan advertised uh, for an assistant professorship of data science. This is one of the first positions specifically for data science that I remember seeing. University of California Davis was hiring a few years ago for a research data scientist. So these kinds of positions are becoming more and more uh, common and in demand. Just down the highway, the University of Virginia recently launched their data science institute to meet this huge demand for uh, training. There's more job positions than there are uh, qualified applicants. And so uh, this course and the University of Virginia's Data Science Institute, uh, all these new types of courses and training are in response to that increased demand. These positions are not just within universities, uh, 
quite the opposite. Organizations like EcoHealth Alliance often look for students with data science skills. I think they're based in New York. They work a lot with health data. Uh, Conservation International, they're located in DC. They just have last week advertised for a scientific programmer. And more locally, a group called Code VA works to bring computer and data science skills to K through 12 students in Richmond and uh, beyond. So this is, you know, this is happening in our own backyards. Data science is in high demand. It's it's here to stay. The demand and number of job positions is growing. And by completing this course you will be strengthening those skill sets. And I really admire your persistence for pursuing your career goals during this time. The types of data that we'll be working with um, range from remote sensing imagery. Uh, These are uh, data that are derived from satellites that orbit the Earth. These data are publicly available and we'll learn where and how we can access these data. We'll also be working with uh, data from natural history museum collections. There are global efforts to digitize museum specimens. So if you're interested in insects or plants, um, then we'll be able to explore those types of data and learn about the people behind those efforts as well, like uh, Michelle Barbosa, who was featured at the Florida Museum. And I've left a link in our resources tab so you can read more about her. We'll also learn about people-powered science like Zooniverse, which is harnessing the power of you know, millions of people around the world to help enter data. This data ranges from like wildlife camera traps to photographs of birds and constellations. And so we'll explore the types of data that are contained in these projects. Primarily, we'll be working with the National Ecological Observatory Network data This is a network of sites across the United States funded by the National Science Foundation where they are collecting an enormous amount of data from, you know, atmospheric data of particles in the air to water samples to vegetation and small mammal um, surveys, all kinds of uh, measurements. And all that data is accessible online. And the great thing about uh, NEON um, is that they have a lot of uh, summer internship opportunities and travel grants. So we'll be able to tap into this uh, interesting and existing network for um, exploring job opportunities. What what jobs look like in ecology that apply these skills. All right, I'm really looking forward to working with you and learning new things with you. What I love about teaching undergraduate level courses is that you all are so creative and ambitious and I I love that energy. So check out the rest of the welcome materials and we'll talk soon.